Hello everyone, pay attention to the very top left of the screen. We're going to get a little extreme virtual ram mode activate 88 miles per hour exclamation point. Uh, that verifies that we accordingly have extreme virtual ram enabled and it is a 512 megabyte swap file on the USB drive. And now we're going to verify that we have the uh, overclock as well, extreme overclock, which we have up to 1.344 gigahertz, up from a smaller number of 1.008 gigahertz. So we're actually in a very, very good place right now. And not only that, I'm going to show you a miracle today. I'm going to be running some stuff better than even a PlayStation Classic can run. Because even though it is at 1.54 gigahertz, it throttles down to 1.34 and below, depending on how the system runs at times. Now I'm going to give you a perfect example of this right now. I'm going to load up Retro Cat Extreme, the shortcut. Uh, Volkino Pebbles did an amazing artwork job on this. Some nice nostalgic elements as far as like the cat, the power glove, and all that good stuff. And we're going to go to low content, start directory, and I have a dummy folder that I placed right on the flash drive. Flash drive is media, and then dummy folder, and these are all the games that I would like to play. And there's a game that uh, would never ever run on the older setup uh, that well whatsoever, but with the extreme overclock, the uh, extreme virtual RAM, and ZRAM, and so on, and especially uh, some of the tweaks that are in RetroArch Extreme and MAME 2003 Extreme, watch and see how this runs now. We're going to run and grunt, uh, run and gun, not run and grunt. I am Groot, right? No, here we go, run and gun, a great Konami arcade game. And we're going to run with MAME 2003 Extreme. And you're going to see this run better than it even runs on the PlayStation Classic. Lo and behold, yes, it is now running better on the Mega Drive, SNES, and NES than it does on the PlayStation Classic. Because even though the PlayStation Classic is at 1.54 gigahertz, it throttles to 1.34 gigahertz and below, depending on how things run, as I aforementioned it before. And right there where it says Program Data... And then the EEPROM underneath that. Normally that would be an error, but we did a bootstrap on it. And Mark W. Kid helped me get this running. I'm in 2003 stream. Uh, we're going to do uh, right now. Play independently. Uh, for some unknown reason, uh, Konami spelled independently wrong. But I'm going to go with it. It's still an incredibly cool game. Okay. Wait to see how nice this game runs. Yes, a lot of games like Elevator Action Returns, they're also going to be running better. Dungeon Master, a lot of the ones, even Ninja Baseball, Batman, Knight, Slashers, and so on. But this is nice, smooth, and seamless, and this is going to go out in the very next update for the Mega Drive SNES and NES Classics. Look at this, fast and bold and furious here. Just the best I've ever seen this game run now. Let's try to get a basket here before we uh, get it. <laughs> okay, we got a basket. But Fast and Furious, and uh, this is a great two-player mode activate, without a doubt now. Doesn't get better than this. And there are other things that run great as well. Uh, I'm going to go back to the main user interface right now. We're going to load up a DOS CD game. And I've been kind of testing this with Game Cleaner for a while now because he really wanted me to get this game going on the mini, and I got it going. And then uh, on top of that, I try to get controls implemented for it. We're going to go up to uh, alphabetically here, to DOS right here, and we have Star Trek The Next Generation, Final Unity for DOS CD. It's a pretty complicated game to install, but I'll do a separate tutorial on how to install this and to go in conjunction with the next update. And when you run this, you're going to be able to run it on uh, pretty much any controller that has like an L2, R2, and uh, preferably a right analog, but if it does not have a right analog, I'm using a PlayStation Classic controller right now. If you don't have the right analog, there's a way around this, which I will have embedded right here. You'll see in a moment here. Sorry for the bump of the camera. But I have uh, controls by default. You simply just load the game and it'll work automatically with controls. No extra configuration necessary. Okay, and the videos even run better here too. If you play this on the PlayStation Classic, you'd realize that this actually uh, has some crazy sound stutter. Okay, we're getting in game here, and you're gonna notice that we don't have mouse controls yet. These are actually mapped Captain to the right analog. A but what I'm gonna do is actually go into the uh, retroarch settings input, and this is what you need to do if you do not have the right analog, and uh, just simply go down to user one binds. And then you're gonna go down to where the right analog is. Now I'm gonna map this temporarily to my left D pad. Right, left, down, Sorry, I did that twice. Up. 
And then we're making sure right, left, up, down. And we can just push start to revert these if we want to. But I'm going to add them again. Okay. And I'm going to exit out. And we're going to go back to the game. And I'm going to have full mouse control. My R2 and L2 will be my left and mouse clicks. And then my left D-pad is going to basically control the ship in outer space as well as actually do the mouse movements in game. Just watch. Look at that. Awesome. Okay, let's see what we have to do here. Let's try talking to Data. Mr. Data, do you have any suggestions? Notice this is run as beautifully with no sound stutter whatsoever. Overclock for the win here. And extreme virtual RAM as well. We could temporarily disrupt the tractor beam. We will have to drop our shields to use I love that they have the original voice actors. This is incredible. I've played so many games where they did not even have the original voice actors. I'm going to take that risk, make it so, and by the way, uh, the new Picard show is amazing. We'll have to take that risk, make it so. Make it so, never get sewed. And look at this, beautiful, beautiful, seamless, it's not bad like it used to be. The sound stutter is pretty much gone, or very, very negligible at this point. And this is on the Mega Drive, SNES, and NES Classic. If you run this on the PlayStation Classic, unfortunately, it's going to still have the sound stutter. Because right now, we're actually running better than the PlayStation Classic can handle this the particular game. has been beamed aboard. Captain, the Warbird is hailing us. Should I ignore it? Maybe they'll uh, shoot some photon torpedoes at me. No, I'm going to talk to them, see what happens. On screen. Federation Starship, this is an internal Gridian matter. You've been warned not to interfere. Your presence here gives me every right to interfere. Why? Your presence here gives me every right to interfere. Why have you... Patrick Stewart for the win. They are locking their disruptors on us. <laughs> oh, no. Captain, you are harboring dangerous criminals. I demand that you transfer them to my <laughs> okay. custody immediately. I'm definitely going to be playing this more, but so incredible. And thank you, Game Clear, for helping, uh, you know, test this game and such. And uh, especially thank you, R-Type and FR500, for helping implement the keyboard to mouth, uh, keyboard controls to the controller. Uh, from the get-go in 2017-18 uh, when we were trying to get things going as far as Turrican so we wouldn't have to use the space bar uh, to do the special move every time from the virtual keyboard which is like trying to pause Mario Brothers to push uh, a virtual keyboard to do the jump on it just does not work out but we're going to go back to the main user interface right now and we're going to load one other game that was also added as far as controls are concerned a uh, Stiggy and uh, RPG action game for DOS Okay, let's do that real quick. I just passed it. Right here, Ultima Underworld, Stygian Abyss. And I also implemented controls for this as well. And we got our spines there. And again, any games that you guys and gals want to see implemented for DOS and uh, MSX and so on, I'll try to get them implemented so they would run by default with your typical Wii, PlayStation Classic, Super Nintendo controllers, and so on. I've already done this for countless games. And I did it for this game as well, Ultimate Underworld, the Stiggy and the Best. And I'm going to add another game too, I'm going to do Daggerfall of the Elder Scrolls 2. Okay. Let's see what this is about for a moment here. If you like games like Dungeon Master, you'll be right at home in a game like this. A nice 3D uh, perspective action RPG game. With a sickening sense of deja vu. And I'm going to pause this for a second until I get in game, so you can see the game in action. Now I'm at the character uh, creation screen. I'll just do a quick character here. And again, I don't have mouse controls, so I'm going to have to do this uh, the same way I did with the Star Trek game. And put hockey binds for user 1. Sorry, user 1, not user 2. I'm going to go right down to the right analog again, and we're going to do the exact same thing. Uh, right, left, down, up. Okay, we're going to go back to resume. And now I have mouse controls. Oh, we're gonna make it left-handed. Uh, sword. And I'm using the uh, left and mouse uh, right clicks. You know, R2 and L2. Standard difficulty. I don't care what the name is, blah, blah, blah. Yes. Okay, let's see the 3D uh, controls here for a moment here. That is awesome. Working seamlessly here. That is incredible. Mm -hmm. 
Very, very cool. Just like the Dungeon Master games. And uh, this game I cannot share, but I'll be sharing like uh, Daggerfall 2 on the Mod Hub. But still cool to see that this controls nice and seamlessly. Okay, we're going to exit out here. And again, if you want to turn the controls uh, for the lefty pad off, just go to Input. And you go to User 1 Binds. And simply go down to the right analog. It should revert on the exit of the game, but if it does not, just simply click start, 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 start on all four of those, and you're good to go. And then, uh, see, I did it accidentally. Start. We're going to exit out now, and we're going to do another DOS game, which is going to be running better with Extreme Overclock and Extreme Virtual RAM as well. And check this out. And this is on the Mod Hub. Modules. Came up the Mod Hub Games tab. Star Gunner. Fantastic shmup game. Also with default controls. You simply just load the game, make sure you have DOSBox SVN core installed, and you're good to go. I even put a profile on here, since you have to add one the first time you play the game. Okay, let's check this game out. And this is a pretty CPU intensive game, but you're going to see it actually runs quite nicely here. We'll play at Admiral difficulty here, because Admiral is what Picard's at currently. Okay. And you can actually buy weapons and such. You have 1,500 credits to start with. Uh, let's try buying something here. Uh, let's get some weapon here. We'll do a plasma bomb. Okay, we'll buy that. We'll place it on our left uh, flank. We'll buy another one for our right flank. Right flank, we got them on both. And we can uh, rinse and repeat on some levels. They have more money to buy some of the more extravagant items, which cost way more money. Okay, let's play now. Okay, and this is going to run so much nicer than ever before. Look at that. Nice and awesome here. And I got my plasma bombs if I do get into a little rut here. And I have been watching the uh, Picard show on CBS, which is a great, great show. It just kind of sucks that they're doing one episode per week. I'd rather have the entire season to binge watch it in one singular day. But some of the streaming services try to do one episode per week, and it's kind of rough. Because nowadays, I would love to see this entire season in its entirety at one get-go. Oops, I filled that one. <laughs> okay. And this Extreme Overclock and Extreme Virtual Rem also benefits the Dreamcast, Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, and countless other things, including Super Nintendo to boot. I'm going to play a Dreamcast game after this, for a brief moment. Okay, I'm going to use my plasma bomb there, because I was getting a little bit overwhelmed by enemies. The green uh, orbs here are obviously the currency that I can collect throughout the course of the stage. I have 1,790 right now. I can use them to buy more items and such after the stage is complete, if I even make it that far. <laughs> but the incredible game, and yes, this is legally shareable on the Mod Hub. I mean, courtesy of the people who originally developed it. Great, great people. And I'm out of plasma bombs, but I can buy more next time. And my game's over. But awesome game. Uh, definitely check it out. Star Gunner. And we're going to load a Dreamcast game right now. And I'm going to do that from uh, the Retroarch Extreme shortcut down here. Again, this is also on the uh, games tab of the Mod Hub. I'm simply going to do it the dummy folder method. I mean, you can add the games per normal, but I typically would like to just load them via the dummy folder method right here. Low content, Star Trek Theory, media, dummy, and I'm going to my Dreamcast folder. And we're going to load a great racing game called Hydro Thunder. And I'm going to see if I can get first place on here. And uh, you can even install a uh, cheat stage mod if you so choose to. I'm going to run this with Flycast Extreme. And there's a little bit of a memory exploit uh, clear trick which I showcased in the last video for Killer Instinct. In games like Paper Mario for the Nintendo 64 core, you can do it on this core as well, but you have to do it a little bit differently than on the Nintendo 64 core. Typically on the Nintendo 64, you do it one way, it doesn't matter if it's on or off, but on the Dreamcast core, if you don't do it properly, you can end up with graphical glitches. But I'll show you what you need to do. I'm going to start the game per normal here. Okay, we're gonna play as Damn the Torpedo. Choose your track. And we'll do Lost Island. Lost here. Island. Great, great game, and I love Four Wolf Thunder. Mind. The other game similar to this. Damn the Torpedo. Okay. Three, two, one. Go. Let's get first place, guys and gals. Let's do this. Can I get some uh, boost here? You don't want to run out of boost completely. Try to save it for when you have another uh, opponent so you can take them out. Let's take the shortcut here while we're here. 
Love the shortcut. Always never fails. Don't miss any of your boosts, otherwise you're going to have zero chance to get in first place. The game is run nice and smooth and seamless there. Awesome. I'm going to show you the uh, memory clear exploit trick throughout the course of the stage here. Go! Right there, that opponent there. That's a good time to use your boost. Okay, we got this. I don't want to be completely out of boost here. See, my boost kept me from being taken out by the enemy there. I got this. I need more boost. More info. <laughs> See? Save that boost for a time like that. Okay, I got this. I need my first place mode activated here. Let's jump right over the fire here. Oh yeah, we got this. Yeah! And I got enough boost to make first place here. It's gonna happen, guys and gals. Just watch. One more boost should do the trick. It's right there, give me first place. I'm gonna fly right over that guy. Get my first place about right now. There we go. Bam! For the win. Anyways, uh, what you need to do if you want to do the memory clear trick, uh, you're gonna go into uh, RetroArch Video Settings. You're gonna go to the Force Disable sRGB toggle. You're gonna toggle it on, and then when it comes back to the screen, you're gonna toggle it back off. And pay very close attention right above See, it is skyrocketing at the full speed it's going to run at, which is roughly 31 frames per second right now. And then you'll be able to be at the maximum full capacity speed as far as the extreme virtual RAM and extreme overclock and extreme retro arc. And, of course, the flycast extreme perimeters are concerned right now. I guess I could just do KMF. Not the full KMF thematic, unfortunately. But we got our first place mode activated.